And now it's time to bring back my good friend and co-host, Jeff Small, as well as our guest, economist, Lawrence Kotlikoff. He's also a professor of economics at Boston University and the president of MaxFi, a personal financial planner. Lawrence, thanks for being back with us here on The Income Generation. Yeah, great to be back with you guys. Always love talking to you. So, so same here, and I know uh, eventually Jeff's gonna be chomping at the bit to ask you some questions about the economy. But before we do that, of course, I wanna talk to you about Social Security because you know, a recent study came out now that said that the Social Security Trust Fund that was scheduled to run out of funds in 2035, with this new crisis, it might actually run out of funds three or four years earlier, uh, which as I've, I've just clarified for our viewers, doesn't mean that Social Security benefits end, but it means that they might have to be reduced by 21% or so based upon their estimates. So are you seeing that? Are you concerned now also that adjustments might have to be made to the benefits sooner? Well, you know, even before the crisis, the system had about a $53 trillion unfunded liability. Uh, to put that in perspective, the official debt's around $25 trillion. So we had two uh, years of debt, in effect, of official government federal debt hidden off the books in Social Security because, you know, when, when uh, the U.S. government has obligations to pay future principal and interest on its official debt, that gets put onto the books. The value in the present of those future obligations is put on the books and recorded. When Social Security has obligations to pay future beneficiaries, it's not put on the books. So to, already uh, the system was in uh, very deep water. It had 50, it was $53 trillion short in terms of comparing the present value of all the future projected benefits with all the projected revenues. And now this is on top of that. So yeah, we did. So, so if, pe if people start taking benefits earlier, which we suspect could happen because it happened during the great recession, not too long ago, uh, that can cause them of course to run out sooner. But if people take benefits earlier, uh, isn't that long-term a little better for the solvency of the trust fund, given that people are living longer lives now? It, it is better for the trust fund. It's worse for the person. So if you have to take, so I've written a couple columns at Kotlikoff that are posted at kotlikoff.net. One is saying, look, if you're unemployed uh, and you're below full retirement age, think about taking your uh, your benefit, or if you have to take your benefit early, take it. But then, at, if you get a job again, which hopefully you will, uh, do two things: think about retiring later, and at full retirement age, uh, a delay, uh, suspending your retirement benefit so that it starts up again at seventy, at a roughly thirty percent higher value than at full retirement age. And then the other thing I talked about uh, is to tap into your retirement account money now and keep and be patient on social security and wait till 70. Now you, your, um, your viewers here might think, well, gee, if the benefits are going to be cut in the future, better to take the money and run. But it turns out even for major cuts of 20% or so, the, the gains from being patient are so large that it's, it's still a big uh, winner to wait. Sure. Sure. And it's a zero sum game. If it's, if it's better for for the recipient, it's worse for the trust fund. If it's worse for the recipient, it's better for the trust fund. So that makes sense. Jeff? So, um, Professor Kolokov, the last time you were on the show, um, you said that we were entering in the greatest depression since the Great Depression because of everything that was happening with the economy and uh, some of the other things that we're facing today. But you also wrote a column on how do, what are the five secrets uh, that you should do to avoid the Great Depression. So why don't you expand on that? And do you still feel that we are entering in the greatest depression since the Great Depression? Well, I think in, in many ways, the numbers are worse than it, at the beginning of the Great Depression. Uh, for, for the US, the decline in output is much sharper uh, right, in the, right in the first year now than it was in 29 to 30. The um, Back then, the stock market dropped dramatically in 29, and then it went back up, not, not back to its peak where it is today, but it went up considerably in 30, and then it continued to it drop for the next three years, so that by 33, it was 86% below where it was. So I'd be very careful about being in the stock market right now. So that might be one piece of advice. Another thing is to try and plan to retire just as late as possible, because we have a very uncertain economy 
most baby boomers are coming into retirement without having prepared well. And most are not thinking about their maximum age of life. They're sure they're going to die on time, which is really a first order stupid. You want to be very, very careful about how long you live because that's a financial catastrophe. If you keep living, you have to keep paying for yourself. Uh, tapping into your retirement accounts early uh, rather than taking your Social Security early is a smart move because the retirement accounts right now, according to the market, are yielding nothing on a safe basis. You can buy 30-year tips, 30-year inflation index, treasury inflation protected securities are called tips. These are inflation protected bonds from the government. They're yielding negative 50 basis points right now. You're actually gonna end up with less money than you put in, you lose principal. So uh, there's not a good safe investment right now uh, for your retirement, but paying, uh, so you, you wanna wait but delaying, so but delaying, yeah, delaying Social Security. If you get eight percent credits, uh, theoretically with zero risk, that's a good, I mean, that's a good that's investment. A, that's a that's a that's a that's a good that's return. A great investment. So we need to leave it there. We need to leave it there for commercial break. But we'll be right back with more words of wisdom from Dr. Kotlikoff coming up on the Income Generation. Just a moment. We'll be right back. Now let's bring back my good friend and co-host Jeff Small, as well as a good friend of the income generation economist and professor Lawrence Kotlikoff. So, um, so you do believe it's still you still have potential uh, for this to be the greatest depression. Uh, you know, last week we had economist Greg McBride on the show, who actually uh, said that he thinks it'll take three years or more before unemployment gets back below five or six percent again. Uh, do you concur? Yeah, I think once the economy gets uh, kind of disconnected, like we're seeing 30 million people probably permanently out of job, most of them, it's very hard for, you know, you need to have employers take a risk that uh, other employers will be hiring because other employers are hiring their customers in order for this employer to hire what will be their customers. So there's this coordination problem, which can lead to prolonged uh, uh depression or recession. And we see this in all the recessions that it takes a while for something to reassure people to get back in there. Uh, let me suggest uh, while we're talking about investing at the personal level or to what to do at the personal level, that uh, the best return people can get right now is on their paying off their debts. So if you have a mortgage at three and a half percent, for example, and you were to cash out your 401k, which as I mentioned, on a safe uh, risk adjusted basis is yielding a negative return today. So if you could do that, cash out your 401k, pay the taxes, especially if you're unemployed right now because you've just been laid off, your tax bracket's low. If you have the, the wherewithal to do this, uh, cash out your 401k, pay off your mortgage, you'll make, you'll make uh, a, a real return that you can't get on the market anywhere and it's perfectly safe. And if you need extra funds to pay off the extra taxes, take out a little bit more from the 401k. I wrote an article on this. Again, it's posted at kotlikoff.net. I wrote a piece in Forbes. It had over a half a million uh, views. So it kind of went viral from my perspective. Uh, but it's, it's, it can, it can be a big money winner. It could be $100,000. And I, and I want to stress that, that you have to be in a low tax bracket for that to work. So if people are unemployed for most of this year and in a low tax bracket, I, I agree that definitely can work. But what people don't understand is there's another benefit to paying off the mortgage is it's not just interest rate versus interest rate because it, paying a mortgage requires more cash flow because you also have to make that principal part of the payment, which puts a bigger drain. It puts more pressure, if you will, on your investments themselves in terms of them, their, their ability to pay interest. So good point, Dr. Kotlikoff. Uh, Jeff, I'd like to turn it back to Social Security, the topic du jour, if we may. So, you know, um, Professor Kolokoff, I'm always getting the question from people about, you know, when is Social Security truly insolvent? Because we hear different numbers, um, you know, with 28 million people unemployed, the unemployment rates are 10.2%, a lot less money's going into the system now for Social Security and the trust fund. The president's talking about cutting back uh, payroll taxes and doing a payroll tax furlough, I, I, I guess, so to speak. Um, so, you know, where is all this going to end? Uh, based on the current trajectory, when is the, what is the true date of insolvency for Social Security? And, and, and I'd like to add to that, if I may, Dr. Kotlikoff, what you think Congress should do 
to fix it. Now, they didn't take your advice last time about testing 60 people and giving them different color cards to walk around with. So they probably won't take it this time, but still, I want to hear how you think they should fix it. Yeah, I think uh, the way we should think about social security is like it's a slowly growing cancer. And then you go to the doctor and you have a, you know, a baseball sized uh, tumor and they decide, well, let's cut off, let's operate on and remove half of it uh, and uh, see you in five years. Then you come back and it's three times bigger and they say, well, let's, ha let's operate on half of it again. And that's really what's been happening since the Greenspan Commission. We've been doing too little too late and we're doing nothing right now to fix the system. So we need to have higher taxes and we really need to, uh, I think, uh, uh, freeze the current system and set up, uh, use the payroll taxes that, were, that are coming in to pay off everybody's benefits that are obligated under the current system and then add a new contribution, about 10% of everybody's pay to a personal security account system that's investing in the global financial system uh, with a government guarantee of a zero real return. So there is a way I think that we can uh, kind of spread the burden across current and future generations, uh, but without help hurting current retirees because they're very vulnerable. Uh, I don't see anybody, uh, you know, Biden is not pushing that vision. He's pushing a vision of taxing people earning extra, who earning more than $400,000, which is a good thing, putting them back onto the payroll tax. But uh, it's, it's peanuts relative to the long run problem. They're looking at a measure of the insolvency of the system that in, they're intentionally looking at the wrong number to make it their adjustments smaller. So briefly, we only have a few seconds left, but do you agree uh, with, uh, to Jeff's question, do you agree that that 2031 to 2035 is really D-Day for when that runs out? I think uh, something will be done uh, of some, I think something will be done. It will be like cutting half the tumor, but not even that much. Uh, so basically we're gonna kick the can down the road continually is what you're saying. That's our pattern. And we're not talking about, you know, the, the $53 trillion number is in table 6F1 of the trustees report. It's way in the back. It keeps getting pushed further back in the appendix so people won't see it. The trustees don't even mention it, you know, <laughs> and that, and that, that, that plan that you had, Dr. Kotlikoff, was what George W. Bush was trying to do years ago. We've gotten away from it. Uh, potentially a good plan. Uh, only one problem is, I think, if they're guaranteeing a zero real rate of return, uh, I think that almost guarantees that next time, instead of the Fed buying corporate bonds, the Fed will be buying stocks. They need to keep it, keep it propped up. So we'll see if that happens, if it comes back to Converse. But we need to leave it there for now. Thanks so much for being back here on the show with us. We really appreciate it. Sure, my pleasure. Take care. And you stay with us too. We have more coming up right here on the Income Generation. We'll be right back.